<clears throat> Hello and welcome to Kerala Gram Market, our daily program on Nifty, Bank Nifty analysis. Uh, before we get started, I'm from I'm doing this from my office, so I'll just see if uh, there are comments and we are li- are we are we live yet and is audio working yet? Waiting for the first comment and yet to happen. If I see a comment, I know that I'm live and the audio is working fine. Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay. Anyway, we'll get started because I'm not getting comment. So, so the first thing, of course, is Nifty chart. And this is very interesting. <clears throat> the daily chart of Nifty has gone above the middle of the channel, number one. Number two, the weekly chart of Nifty is a bullish engulfing that engulfs the body of the previous candle, which was a bullish hammer. So bullish hammer previous week, bullish engulfing this week tested the top of last to last week's bullish, sorry, bearish engulfing. That is what this rejection week is about. But the candle is still strong. So let's write all of that down. Oh, thank God. There are uh, there are enough uh, comments. So <clears throat> Nifty above the middle of the channel. Weekly candle is a bullish engulfing covering the previous bullish hammer. I mean, this is obviously the a strong, strong signal. Bank Nifty is also looking pretty strong. And that is also confirming a bullish hammer. Bank Nifty confirming, not as strong as Nifty, but strong nevertheless. Bank Nifty confirming a bullish hammer. Both indices, both indices on a monthly basis. Nifty definitely giving the highest monthly close ever. Bank Nifty not, but interestingly, Bank Nifty confirmed a uh, Harami cross on monthly time frame. Nifty is a bull, Nifty is the Nifty highest monthly close ever. Nifty highest monthly close ever. Bank Nifty confirmed a Harami cross on monthly time frame. Everything looks strong. Vivek is saying, bro is still not in Bangalore. No, Vivek, I am in Bangalore. This is my old office. So, uh, I thought I'll just come here to work because... <coughs> so, uh, option chain. Uh, so, now let's go to option chain. This is interesting. Lot of put addition at 22,300, right? Lot of put addition. Some addition at 22,500. But overall, if you look at this, this is what it looked like. Lot of put writing at every single strike. Nominal call writing near the ATM. But the most significant open interest is now 22,300 put, right? Again, we'll go back to this. 22,300 put has a very strong support now. Forming a base with lot of put writing. 2500 has some call, but that could be just because it's a round figure or people are doing that hedging or if you're lowering the margin or something. So I'm not uh, thinking about that very seriously, but this is very strong. And PCR, of course, looking super strong. (laughs) 1.1 plus overall. And the uh, smaller PCR is uh, 0.75 around ATM, 1.1 overall. That's interesting. Okay. 0.75 around ATM. 1.1 overall. This is a curve ball because this is kind of low. But that is probably because after 22,300, there are no other supports here. And there's a lot of resistance here. Okay. That is interesting. If 22,300 doesn't hold, there's a problem here. But uh, again, early to conclude because it's just fright. I mean, uh, 
sorry one second uh, one second uh, i'm going to take everything back because this is the this these are two different expiries sorry yeah now it makes sense uh, there is this i don't know why it happens but it happened again there's a long weekend problem which we encounter so sorry so basically 22300 is forming a strong base there's a lot of support below 22300 300 is the support 200 is the support 100 is the support 22000 is the support so 1.1 around atm and 1.1 overall both is 1.02 around atm sorry so this has happened before in our analysis <coughs> expiry was strong thank you thank you everybody who corrected my expiry <coughs> so so this is 28th 4th april this is strong and oi change for 4th april that's also 2300 is super strong so basically long story short 22300 and below is a strong support pcr is looking strong everything uh, bullish bias now participant wise option data this is where things become super interesting everybody is indecisive and that's also true right because we just saw one day of trading because why because it's a new expiry start of a new uh, uh, so participants have not formed clear directional views not too much oi fault right and that is true even for this even for the uh, open interest but what is interesting is clients still have around 2 lakh put short and on the opposite side of that it is mostly fiis and dais if fiis mostly 1 lakh and da uh, dais have around 30k pros have around 30k but the big big thing is that retail have 1.7 l short fis have this long but see if it's retail against fi i'm not very worried the problem is retail against pro but pros oi is very nominal here right pro oi is very so i'll just say ki no view formed yet and if you look at futures data this has to be interesting yeah <coughs> fi doesn't have any kind of oi di doesn't have any kind of oi pro doesn't have any kind of oi client has very tiny oi <laughs> but oi has dropped no not much oi uh, on any participant i think that's because of the financial year starting people must have done tax loss harvesting squaring of their oi etc etc finally last part cash market very nominal data 200 cr insignificant verdict uh, chart is the only tool available now due to low oi and chart says bullish bias april 5th rbi event so if you look at calendar you can see that we on 5th april we have interest rate decision 5th april is what 5th april is friday yeah. so again it won't expire this uh, sorry affect this week's expiry it is only uh, next week's expiry so uh, so i'll take this question from anbo long term <coughs> so we'll answer this question and go today so again coming back <coughs> there is rbi event but it's not uh, nifty and bank nifty expiry will happen before that right uh, trade is see chart looks like it's about to blast but there is an event on april 5th on the one hand you can say that before even market is unlikely to give a directional view a directional breakout that's one way of looking at it 
so i personally think that whatever big move is coming will have come after rbi event and if that is my view i am better off taking bullish positions for april 10th expiry right because see the thing is um if so see first of all this is a you should not be shorting here no questions asked the question is will market give like a big move before rbi event so if you are planning to do this week's trade i will do bear sorry bull put spreads because i am hoping that no significant move will happen before rbi event and it will stay bullish to neutral right but if you are betting that there's a blast coming the blast event might not happen before rbi event in that case i will probably put longer term bets for april 10th so then my trades would be full put spreads for the near expiry so buy on dips sorry um, bullish bond dips full put spreads for the near ex for this week expiry bull call spreads for next week expiry my underlying idea being very simple i don't think there is a big up move coming before the rbi event there might be neutral there, there might be small up move a big up move seems i highly unlikely down move seems very very unlikely so if i take a bull put spread i'll make a little bit at least right i mean even if a big up move comes i'll miss the opportunity but i'll make some money but if you want to bet on a big up move the chances of that happening before rbi event seems low to me so i'll probably take bull call spreads for the next week expiry right this is the <clears throat> underlying idea nava is saying it would be a steep down move followed by a big up move post decision post arbitration in if you think nava is right then you should not be doing bull put spreads for the for this week expiry uh, so i would say the preferred trade is next week's bull call spreads right <clears throat> then comes uh, so the last part is uh, the last part is dollar yeah dollar seems very interesting so i don't want to touch dollar now because it's either going to come down in a violent way or if it breaks above 8350 it's going to go up in a violent way in either case i don't want to gamble with dollar so i'll happily pass right this is my dollar bet so long story short i think market is going to create further all time highs now let's come back to anvo's question which is what is my long term perspective and though i still maintain my original idea i think nifty will make all time highs again and again and again and then we'll see it coming down in a big way that coming down in a big way has nothing to do with india or the way india is working or the way indian economy is working i think this is going to be a global deflationary bubble <laughs> in a global deflationary bubble we don't have any control over what will happen so uh, <clears throat> i mean whenever uh, i tell people that there is a crash coming people say that boss but india is doing so well i am not questioning that at all all i am saying is that in a very large deflationary bubble it doesn't matter what india does everything is written by the global economy so not a fan of uh, how do i put it uh, any one particular economy doing well or badly when the entire world comes under massive deflationary crisis right so my long term uh, <coughs> my long term uh, view is that we'll see all time highs uh, like kayu is saying uh, layoff started first red flag kayu that is very very true i think layoffs have started in a big way vivek is saying equity holding rakha hai fresh in now i don't have any equity holdings at all i mean there's one there's just one company 
to shares i own it's called riskilla software technology private limited and uh, <laughs> i don't think that's traded on any exchange uh, so that's that yep so long story short uh, we are still going higher till it reverses right and nobody knows when it will reverse so that is my analysis for today we'll see you again tomorrow thank you so much for joining and as usual please take care